Forget T-Rex and Dragonosaurus. This is the fight of the century. Dinosaurs are big, for the most part. But being big does come under a bit of vagueness, mostly with regards to what do you mean by big? Now this is something I've been into in this video here, but there will always be an organism that is crowned as the biggest thing in X category. The biggest organism alive today is the Pando forest. Biggest terrestrial predator is a title being fought by a few megatheropods. Biggest predator in general was the megalodon, and the biggest animal to ever live in Earth's history was today's blue whale, up until a month or two ago. But that's a brand new animal, and I will get into that after I'm done with my Cretaceous segment. If you subscribe so you don't miss it. The biggest terrestrial animal to exist in Earth's history, however, is one that comes with another debate. It was definitely a sauropod, we know that much, since the group in general is not only the biggest terrestrial group that we know of, but they also represent the mechanical limit of how big a terrestrial vertebrate can physically get to while still leading an actual life. Question is, which sauropod? Now the recent discovery of an animal bigger than a blue whale has made me somewhat hesitant to commit to saying that these were definitely the biggest ever, since we might find something bigger. But there is even a debate between two dinosaurs that we do know about, both hailing from South America. In the red corner, we have Patagotitan. And in the blue corner, we have Argentinosaurus. I'd, I'd come up with a cooler intro for both of them, but I feel like their names kind of say everything that they need to. Both of these dinosaurs were bloody huge. Like, really huge. But as they're such big animals, finding complete remains are close to impossible. A specimen preserving perfectly is rare enough when they're small. But the bigger the animal, the longer it will take to decompose, the longer scavengers will have the chance to pick the body apart, the longer the skeleton will be exposed to disarticulation and erosion, and the longer that thing will take to bury. All essential parts of the taphonomical process, which I do go into more here. Now because these remains are so incomplete, size estimates are just that. Estimates. And depending on your method of estimation, you do get different results. So I'm gonna give a really brief description of each animal and then go into the size estimates as well as why this isn't quite as cut and dry as you might think. Both these giants are as suggested by the names from Argentina, with Patago Titan living smack bang in the middle of the Cretaceous between 118 and 98 million years ago, and Argentinosaurus living a little later at 96 to 92 million years ago. Pago Titan's turf was an area covered abundantly in conifer forests, with the odd open plain that was known to increase in terms of river size seasonally, but the water here was low energy and slow moving. Other animals it shared this environment with were crocs, turtles, Velosauropod chubtosaurus, and the huge and monstrous Tyranotitan. Moving over to Argentinosaurus, it lived in a slightly more arid environment, but still one that supported some forests with a few more flowering plants since they were rising to prominence around this time. Living here were also various forms of fish, crocs, turtles, a higher presence of squamates and sphenodonts, along with some more sauropod competition, such as Lemaeosaurus, Chuconsaurus, and Chucarosaurus. More tetrapods have been found from this area too, such as Abelosaurids like Scorpiovinator and Trachosaurus, Paravians like Averoraptor and a few Carcharodontosaurids such as Maraxes and Argentinosaurus's own version of Tyranotitan, the equally as large Mapusaurus. Now, not to put too fine a point on it, but these were huge animals. Size estimates for Patagotitan fall in at around 31 to 40 meters, or 115 to 131 feet in length, and 45 to 75 tons. And for Argentinosaurus, we're looking at around 30 to 39.7 metres, or 98 to 130 feet, and a weight of between 80 and 95 tonnes. Now these are estimates with a huge amount of vagueness. The numbers sit a little higher in terms of length for Patagotitan. 
But if it was on the smaller end of those estimations and Argentinosaurus was on the larger end, this would make the latter longer. Also, the weight estimations fall a lot higher for Argentinosaurus, making it the more robust animal. So we come back to the question that I always ask when we talk about size, what do we mean by big? Now direct comparisons have actually been made between the two in various studies as well. Some studies have compared the vertebrae and leg bones in particular, finding the spinous processes and femurs to be larger in Patagotitan, but others found Argentinosaurus's dorsal column and therefore torso to be considerably longer. At the end of the day, these are very scarce remains from animals that had subtly different proportions, so who knows how accurate these comparisons actually are. Either way, in 2022, paleontologists thought that their size alone justified a new group, the Colossosaurs. There's also the issue of other contenders. Weight estimates often fall the highest with these two, but other sauropods show fierce competition for the longest, such as Poetosaurus, Dreadnoughtus, Paralititan, and the ones with particularly long necks, Supersaurus, and Mementosaurus. One thing is for sure though, and that is the insane growth of all of them. How big do you think their eggs got? I'll count to five, just so you can have a think about it. If you said no bigger than an ostrich egg, you'd be correct. Yep. Compared to their adult size, sauropod eggs were tiny. That's because 15 inches wide is roughly the egg size limit. You see, oxygen still has to permeate through that shell to help fuel the fetus inside, and oxygen can only get so far, so the shell can't be too thick. But anything bigger than 15 inches would mean that the shell isn't thick enough to accommodate that kind of mass without crumbling under its own weight. So in order for an animal to go from this to this in a single lifetime, means that the growth rates of these animals were insane. If you had a brand new pet Argentinosaurus that was only a week old and 25 inches long, which you'd left with a neighbor to look after whilst you took a two week long holiday, you'd probably come back to an animal that's around six feet long, which also means that they had to be eating machines. It's no wonder these formations were heavily forested areas. Now the science of paleontology is desperate to find out the answer of which one was definitely the biggest. Since the insights this could give us on the weight and mechanical limits of the animal kingdom would be unmatched and countless ecological questions could be answered that help us decipher worlds gone before us. But as fans and enthusiasts, I say, who cares? Does it really matter what was the biggest sauropod or the biggest theropod? They're freaking dinosaurs, man. Like, what more do you want? These animals are unlike any that have existed before or afterwards, and the size becomes frankly irrelevant when we consider just how alien these creatures seem and how they can all get our childish imaginations racing. Catch you guys next time.